uh, this is a, a like a book review. Uh, it's kind of a two-time first for me. One, I've never done a video review of a book. I've done written reviews, never a video. Uh, two, I've never done a review of a book that I have not completed. This is the first time. I'm only about halfway through this. I read as time allows. Be forewarned, this book's about 900 pages, roughly. It's maybe more or less, give or take. There is very, very little fluff. So you will not read through this like a dime store novel. Matter of fact, you won't read through this like a lot of things because he has packed information, tons of it. Um, but I actually feel safe going ahead and giving this review, given Gary's stance on a lot of things. Um, he lets you know where he gets them from and how he's come about what he's come about. So, you know, I, I don't see any agenda that he's serving. Like, I've read some books, and I'm not going to mention which ones. They're great. But they borderline fantasy. You get to the end, they have an agenda. You know, you realize that you've just wasted that much time of your life. This, after hearing him speak, because you can find him a lot on YouTube. Uh, after hearing him speak, I'm not going to say I agree with everything he says, but I'm going to say so far that I've seen most of the stuff he writes, he uh, he actually does do research on it. And not only does he do research on it, he um, he shows you where the research has come from. Uh, because he studied a lot. Bible, Gnostic scriptures, Quran. I have no idea if I pronounce that. Uh, Gilgamesh and ancient other epics. A language etymology, secret society publications. He spent many, many years doing this. Um, I bought mine through Gary, and you can buy it through there, and I don't know if he's still doing it or not. But I believe he is. He, he'll uh, autograph it for you. Um, he gives you a reference for everything. You don't have to worry where he got what from because he will give you a reference. I'm just going to play a couple of three clips out of some interviews he's done. Um, you know, there, there's one, it's John Pounders. I don't really know him, and I don't know John Pounders. And I just started watching John Pounders after he interviewed Gary, and he's very impressive. Now you see TV on YouTube. You can check that out. Look at mythologies from around the world, and people have probably heard people like out of uh, the mythologies, like in Greek, where we have the Titans, or we have the Anunnaki in Sumerian mythology. The Titans were two different groups. One was giants and one, one were the, the gods. And so if we look at the Anunnaki in Sumerian mythology, we have the same thing. So we have two groups. One was giants and one was gods. And so the second group, which is the offspring of the gods and human females in polytheist and uh, philosophy and, and mythology, uh, they produced earthborn gods. And we need to understand that the Nephilim were like a demigod. And they were a demigod in both the Genesis account and on all other accounts around the world. So they were part god or part fallen angel in the monotheist belief system, our belief system. And they were also part god and part uh, human in all the other belief systems. If you look at Akhenaten in any of the King Tut museums, look at a snake face. I mean, we're talking a face of a snake. And so the snake and the crocodile and the dragon are the same type of animal species in prehistory and in their allegory. So when we talk about the, the, the Nephilim and the snake face, they are the dragon kingships. Okay? 
And uh, that's why snake and dragon imagery is absolutely everywhere in prehistory and dominates the royal houses. And it doesn't matter whether you go to China or you go to Central America or, or you go to Egypt and you've got this cobra uh, aspect uh, that's really popular in the Egyptian diet. Of course, the, the Templars which had the Red Cross. So look for the cross as sort of that sort of uh, usurping of that symbol into different colors. And of course, when we talked about uh, the Nazis, we talked about the Teutonic Order on one of the other interviews that right. we did. Yeah. And so, um, I guess, like, how about, there was probably a lot of members other than just, uh, I guess the royal families were probably at the top, but it was similar to the Freemasons to where there was people that were part of it that may not have known all the inner workings as well, or is it, was it uh, just, you know, secluded for royalty? That's a very, very good point. You have to understand, and people need to understand, that the Templars, what makes them so important in terms of what they did and what they established at this point in history is they established for all the secret societies going forward and, and are kind of a parent society for the, the many that sort of outflow from them after their breakup. Roll totally through war. But the, that's what they were trying to do. And so the analogies between Napoleon and Hitler are significant and both um, uh, prophesied uh, by uh, Nostradamus. And so there's a third one that's coming. And it's interesting how if we look at a time frame of the end time and Nostradamus' prophecies of the end time, if you sort of roll things forward, we start to see some of the wars of the Middle East that Nostradamus uh, has, had talked about. Um, somewhere around the 2030 or 2040s is, is where almost everything comes together. Yeah. And whether or not that's totally accurate or not, that's really not my point. My point is, is again, from the other side, is, is they are seeing and predicting and trying to bring out, trying to bring out this rebellion, this, this destiny, uh, day with destiny to uh, rebel against God in the end time. They want to bring this about. That's their goal. And they'll choose any time that they can to make this happen, but they will take the ordained times uh, if that's all that's available to them. Uh, martial arts uh, to, to train these armies for battle. He is the one that introduced war for the most part in, let's say, a more technologically organized um, way for... Uh, the descendants of Cain and, and the Nephilim kings. So wow. he had a significant piece of the debauchery and the degradation of the antediluvian world and just teaching uh, unbridled knowledge without any control with laws or regulations or the applications thereof. Yeah, so they, they uh, how long, this is a question I, that I had. So, do you going to see, this is, these are links that he's got to radio shows that he's done. I'm telling you, this is a drop in the bucket. Um, the book, if you wonder how you're going to like the book, you know, you can click right here. When I first seen it, and I thought, well, why should I buy it? It's all online. I can read it for free. This is a drop in the bucket. I mean, this is literally a drop in the bucket. It's amazing how much information that he has up here, or in his book. Up here, it's amazing how much, but you'll really be amazed by how much is in the book. It's, it's staggering. And like I say, he gives... Um, references he lets you you don't have to worry where he got something from you never have to worry about it because he's going to he's got a whole section in the back of the book that tells where he referenced what from um, this is my most prized book it had one of funny as of the books I've read it's you know this one I've not completely read yet but this is my most prized book. Um, 
you know, it's, it's, you, when you read this, you learn a lot. Uh, and Gary, I think Gary's been like 30, 40 years that he studied this before he ever decided to write a book. And he don't appear to be like some others out to promote himself. He appears to me to be just wants to get information to the public. Now, when you um, say, for instance, when you when you study antediluvian times, it's not going to um, it's an historical thing. You're more being an historian at that point in time. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, James, Jude. Now you got the New Testament. The New Testament is what you become a Christian by. by. Knowing this just makes you a theist. And a theist is one that believes in a higher power. Uh, so this is, like I say, just this will make you a theist. But at the same time, if you really want to appreciate some of the stuff that's said in the New Testament, this helps you un understand those words that we've not used in forever. Um, this will help you understand those words. This tells you who's who and what's what. He starts back then. And as you can see, how secret societies and the descendants of giants plan to enslave humankind. So it goes to current. Um, I just can't tell you how blown away I am by the book. So anyway, that's that's my synopsis. Uh, if you want to read a book that teaches you all that, instead of buying a hundred books, that one right there teaches you everything that you need to know. Uh, I would also throw in that. Uh, there are other writers out there, uh, such as Rob Skiba, that do a good job. Just Gary's book is the most in-depth book that I have ever seen in all these years of studying this. And one of the first books that I actually learned from. So...